what's going on guys it's omniarch and today i'm bringing you a brand new video where i'm going to be answering one of your most asked questions and that is is rise of kingdoms pay to win now ever since i started making more rise of kingdoms guides here on youtube i've noticed on every video there's usually at least one or two people who are either legitimately asking me hey is this game pay to win or is there really a role that i can play as a free-to-play player or do you have to spend a lot of money to be effective in this game or there's some people who are just straight up being cynical and saying hey your guide doesn't matter because free to play have no place here this game is pay to win don't even waste your time and so i think it's a really important topic that i cover as somebody who has been making content for this video and since you guys want to know so badly what i think about this topic i just really wanted to make this video so so there's two things I want to talk about before I go ahead and tackle the root question of this video. The first thing is my affiliation with Lilith Games. I have never been compensated by Rise of Kingdoms or Lilith Games in any monetary form or fashion. I've never been given in-game items from them. I've never even spoken to any of the developers of the game. I have no connections at Lilith Games. I don't have anyone I can send a text message to. I've never seen a penny for posting these videos and they've never even asked me to make these videos. I make these videos because I enjoy the game and I've played it for a very long time. And on top of that, it's a, it would be against YouTube's terms and conditions for me to have paid advertisement for a video without disclosing it to my viewers explicitly and so if i were lying here there would be some severe consequences for me and my channel and so i want you guys to know that everything that i talk about in this video all of my opinions are truthfully my opinions uh, and there's a lot riding on that now the second thing i want to talk about is what exactly is pay to win in a game like rise of kingdoms i mean you really have to define what is winning in this game right like do you just defeat another player on the battlefield or do you just attack their city until all their troops die and all the resources are gone or do, is it becoming king of the kingdom or is it winning the most Ark of Osiris matches or is it winning all of your KVK events this game is so complex and there's so many different events and things that you can focus on that I don't really think the question is rise of kingdoms pay to win a very accurate question right it, it, it's not a very specific question right because winning in this game has to be defined by the player some people's definition of pay to win is can you pay money to have the highest power level and by that definition sure yeah the game is pay to win but the enjoyment of the game and the gameplay itself and all the events um aren't going to be instantly easy just by having a high number in the top left corner it is a strategy game and it does base strongly on community i think a lot of times what people mean when they say pay to win for rise of kingdoms is can you pay to be essentially an influential tyrant on your kingdom right i mean nothing is worse than starting a on a fresh new account and all of a sudden all of these people come over from a different kingdom and they have super high power levels and they just start killing everyone's cities they start expanding across the map and nobody else can really do anything to them because they're such strong players so when you ask the question is rise of kingdoms pay to win uh you know if the question you're really asking is can you spend a ton of money in order to forcefully exert your will and leadership on your kingdom i think the answer is a little bit tricky now a lot of people would say yes right like if you're a, if you're a long time player of this game and you're very cynical of the game uh you may say yeah that's a hundred percent what i mean by pay to win and that's totally 100 the case but i'm gonna make the argument that that is not actually the reality in fact here's how i would look at pay to win for rise of kingdoms now if we're defining pay to win as one player being able to kill tons of other players or single-handedly take down alliances in a kingdom i think that a whale's ability to accomplish that mission decreases over time either in a linear or maybe even an exponential fashion with the x-axis being amount of time passed from the kingdom start date and the y-axis being number of players that they can successfully kill all on their own so what i mean by this is the longer a kingdom exists and the the stronger the average player of that kingdom becomes it becomes harder and harder for pay to win players to just completely kill everybody else on the server 
I think a lot of times when people think pay to win, they think of a game that's sort of one versus one, right? Where if we were playing a game like Call of Duty, and if Call of Duty were pay to win, then you could pay for a gun that's just more powerful or more accurate, or your, your player has more health or something like that, right? And in that instance, since it's a one-on-one -on -one battle, whoever paid the most money would certainly win the fight. But the thing is, Rise of Kingdoms is a community, essentially MMO, right? I mean, there's this game has millions and millions of players worldwide and so there's rarely ever going to be a case where if you're playing effectively within a, in an alliance that you're going to be forced to fight a whale all by yourself and this is kind of where that graph comes into play that i just described where if it's a brand new kingdom right if you are in a brand new kingdom and somebody joins and spends five thousand dollars speeding up their account building up an army then sure yes that pay to win player will be so much stronger than the rest of the kingdom because of how many more troops that they have as the average power of the kingdom rises right the average player the average free to play player starts to get tier four troops it becomes very very difficult for a single whale or a duo of whales or a couple of whales to really just go rogue and kill the entire kingdom and the reason for that is because how battle is actually set up within this game now at its core the winning team of any war in this game will be the one that has the most number of troops or the access to the most number of troops now of course commanders do come into play but if you run out of troops then they're not very useful now i know you guys are thinking well you know the more you spend the more you can speed up your troops but if one player wants to take down an alliance of 70 t4 players they're gonna have to make troops 70 times faster and that gets really expensive really fast and sure you know you could do that but it's only a matter of time before that well just gets bored or they realize that they're just blowing absurd amounts of money for really no reason because there's not that much enjoyment in just aimlessly killing people in this game, right? You ultimately want an objective, right? You want to kill people for an event or for a certain reward. And even a single whale versus maybe 40 T4 free to play players is going to have a really tough time keeping up. And again, that's because of the way that this game's battle system is uh in place right the way that it's implemented and how deaths are calculated so healing troops is way more efficient and way more cost effective than training new troops right it's just way easier way better to heal up troops than it is to train new ones and it's because of that that whoever sustains the most deaths is going to have the hardest time keeping up in a war and so the way that battle is calculated in this game actually really does benefit the defending player and so typically if you are a free-to-play player and you're worried about a whale attacking you um you know if it's a one-on-one -on -one scenario like we talked about before yes odds are you're going to lose that battle but in a few versus many scenario where the average power of the kingdom it has reached that tier for power level the amount of deaths that the offensive players are going to be taking is just way higher than the amount of deaths that the defending players are going to be taking on top of the fact that they already have to heal and train 20 30 40 times more troops than an entire t4 alliance it just gets to be unsustainable super fast and again you could pay to do this um but you really have to look at this realistically right technically it could be done but realistically would it be done probably not and if it is being done in your kingdom how long are those wells going to continue to spend outrageously before they get bored right because again th there really has to be some sort of goal because aimlessly killing this game is literally just throwing money away to illustrate my point let's talk about how troops are killed in this game right like how are troops deaths calculated to find that out we can go into the hospital you tap the little bandage here and you can tap on this little eye right next to the number of wounded that you have this page is crucial for understanding when you are about to get into war before kvk things like that this page explains to you exactly how and when troops die and how many how the deaths are calculated in any specific fight so let's go ahead and read this together when your army is in your city defending against an enemy attack 
all severely wounded units will be sent to the hospital when you are in an ally city or allied structure defending against an enemy attack half of your severely wounded units will die instantly when you are battling an enemy on the map or at a resource point all severely wounded units again will be sent to the hospital when you're battling an enemy at sanctums altars or level one passes all severely wounded units will again be sent to the hospital when you're battling an enemy at shrines or level two passes half of your severely wounded units will die instantly when you're battling an enemy at the lost temple or level three passes all severely wounded units will die instantly and finally this is the most important one and the biggest thing that combats whales from taking over tons and tons of t4 players is when you are attacking other cities or alliance buildings all severely wounded units will die instantly so what's important to notice here is that bullet point number one and bullet point number seven when you are defending against an enemy attack in your city all your wounded go to the hospital when you're attacking another city all severely wounded units die instantly oh let's see if we can join this really quick let's see if we can jump in here real quick hey so what that means is when somebody is attacking your city and you look at the battle report they're gonna have way more deaths than you unless your hospital is full and that's the biggest thing at the bottom here it says please note that when hospital is full all severely unit, wounded units are unable to enter the hospital and receive treatment and will die so when someone's attacking your city they're getting only deads right they're not filling their hospital because their troops are just dying and they'll have to retrain them however your hospital is starting to fill up and you can simply heal your troops whereas your enemy has to retrain them and again we talked about how much more resource and time inefficient it is to retrain troops as opposed to just heal the ones that you already have so we have to ask ourselves how sustainable is it for one or two or a small group of whales to go around and attack a ton of players when the average power of the kingdom it reaches that t4 mark and again the reason that i'm saying t4 mark is because i admit right i already admitted that in the earlier stages of a kingdom a, a super whale certainly can dominate the kingdom right certainly but once that kingdom reaches the average power of a t4 player how sustainable is it for one or a couple of whales to go through and start killing all these cities every time they hit your city they're taking dead troops whereas you can just heal yours and this is why waging war is so so cost ineffective because anytime you're attacking a city or you're attacking a a fortress or attacking a flag the attacker is taking so many deads uh and and the the defender has to pay their hospital bills down it's so expensive to wage war in this game and the burden of that expense is lifted the more players that you have to distribute those wounded and deads to so if you're an alliance with 40 50 70 active members and all of you are rallying objectives and you're all fighting on the field and you're all taking turns getting those wounded and deads you're going to be able to sustain a war for a much longer period of time than a single player is constantly attacking and having to retrain troops and attacking and retrain troops and this is why it's hard for me to answer the question is rise of kingdoms pay to win because you know as a kingdom gets older and the average power of the players gets stronger it becomes harder and harder and harder for a single player to go through and wipe out the kingdom and so what's important to know here is that being a member of an active strong alliance is the best way as a free-to-play player to protect yourself against random attacks and also to be a useful contributing member when it comes to events like kvk and arc one single player can't compete with mega alliances it's just not possible now again if you're one of those cynical people who leave the comments on my videos and you're going to go down there right now and start typing your disagree comments consider how i've defined pay to win in this and consider how i've defined winning because i really think it would be difficult to refute my points in general right there may be some oddly specific instances in one kingdom there was one time where this guy whose dad was a ceo billionaire and he killed the whole kingdom and he spent five hundred thousand dollars i don't care about the outliers right 
I don't care about those stories. I'm sure their stories. I'm sure, you know, there's going to be someone down there who's, who says something about this guy who spent a half a million dollars in the game to kill. But the exceptions are not the rule, right? And the general rule is that if you are an active member of a strong alliance and you all work together, you can be a highly valuable member of your alliance even if you don't have the strongest commanders now not only is it way more unsustainable for one player to try to demolish a ton of others because of the wounded to dead ratio but free-to-play players can benefit immensely just from having a couple of pay-to-win whales on their team and that's another thing that i like to tell people right it's not like this game is a single player game right you will inevitably if you're in a strong alliance be allies with a lot of the whales in your kingdom right because some of the best rewards in this game require that a lot of players work together and as we've already established one pay to win can't do it all by themselves one person or two people or three people can't win arc, arc of osiris by themselves they can't win kvk by themselves right it requires a team and what Lilith has done with Rise of Kingdoms is really interesting in the way of uh, rallies, right? Rallies are a way for free to play players to gain the benefits of a pay to wins army. What do I mean by this? Well, when you have a target that you as an alliance want to take down, whether it's a flag or a fortress or an enemy city, it doesn't matter. What you can do is have your most powerful player initiate that rally and have all of the other free to play or low pay to play players pile on to that rally what this does is the rally leader so the whale of your alliance is going to be the one to contribute the commander skills talent builds and technology for that fight so that means that it doesn't matter if you you know if we take a look at your technology and you you know you just reached tier four and you have none of this filled out at all none of this is filled in once your troops become a part of your whales rally the only technology for that rally that matters is the leader of that rally and the whale benefits from this by not only having the 200,000 units that they're sending to the rally, but they also will benefit from the 1.3 or 1.8 million troops that are sent from the free to play or low pay to play players. So those of you that don't spend any money on this game, or you spend very little and your commanders aren't super powerful and your technology isn't super powerful, you can still be super useful in an alliance because you are amplifying the power of some of the stronger players in your alliance and so i challenge you guys to start looking at it in that way where instead of saying how strong can one player be you should start looking at it as how strong can we be as a team and i know that sounds super corny um but the game is literally built around that right it's literally built around teamwork and the game is is offering you uh tools to amplify the effectiveness of the most powerful players right same thing goes for defending flags defending fortresses whoever's leading that defense those are the ones where the talents matter the skills matter and the tech matters and that's pretty much it guys i think that the game you know certainly there are areas where pay to win players have a huge advantage especially with things like mightiest governor and things like that you know a lot of those events um are not going to be won by free to play players of course right of course but the fun in the game isn't necessarily from just going and killing other players. It's doing it as a team in, in order to achieve an ultimate goal. And I think in that regard, it's way more beneficial to have a strong alliance that works together, communicates well, and has fun than it is to just be a single lone player or a group of two or three people who are really strong on their own, but they can't really win any group events because there's not enough of them to compete. That's just my opinion, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I would love to hear your comments down in the comments section below. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you drop a thumbs up on it. It really does help my channel out a ton. If you're new around here, subscribe and click that bell to be notified the next time that I upload a new Rise of Kingdoms video. The link to my Twitch channel will be in the description below as well. Sometimes I stream Rise of Kingdoms, but even if I'm not and you see me online playing something else, feel free to stop by and ask me any questions that you have about the game. I'll be happy to answer them for you. And with that being said, guys, thank you so much for watching. This has been Omni. I will talk to you guys again soon. Peace.